guys, Kelly here with a giant Blix haul that I can't wait to share with you guys. We're gonna go over some really cool products that I was able to get at Blix in downtown Chicago, and I hope you guys like it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this canvas paper I got. It is 10 sheets and it's nine by 12 inches. Uh, canvas paper, uh, from what I know, it's used mostly for oil painting, which I'd really like to start doing in the future. And so I just got myself a little not super expensive pad. Strathmore is uh, pretty affordable as a whole. Next, I got myself some charcoal. It is Blick brand and it's studio grade charcoal. And it says it's the finest artist quality. And I'm really excited about this because I love doing large charcoal drawings. Um, and with large charcoal drawings, it's always important to get yourself a very nice fixative, fixative, fixative. Um, I just got the Krylon brand. It's a workable fixative, so it doesn't prevent you from going back over things that you've already fixed, which I think is really nice until you're like 100% finished, but it really sucks to start a project and then want to walk away from it for a while and then smudge it if you're not fixing it or not being able to go back if you're using like a more permanent fixative. So. Definitely, I would keep this in mind if you like to work on longer projects or bigger projects that take longer. Next thing I got is Mod Podge. Mod Podge is great. It's kind of like Elmer's glue for big kids. Um, it says water-based sealer, glue and finish. I think it's really great for decoupaging, which is really fun and I highly recommend it. But it's also good for making collages, especially on canvas. And it just, you put some on, you slap whatever you want on it, and then you put more on and it's done. Easy. Next, I got myself some new markers and they're the Pigma markers. And I got these in a set as well. I got the Graphic One, the Micron 01, the Micron 05, and the brush. And let me tell you, I am madly in love with these. They are so cool and they're waterproof, which is even better. So I could draw something and then paint over it and it would be not a problem at all, which is something I really like to do because my process goes sketch, ink, paint or color or whatever. And these are great. If I could have like 10 more of these in brush, I would do it in a heartbeat. And they are on the pricier side, but it's definitely nicer than worrying about a pen that's, is it gonna bleed? Is it not gonna bleed? Is it gonna be too much ink? Is it not gonna be enough ink? You don't have to worry about it because these pens are really great. The next thing I got is some artistic acrylic gesso and it's the Eurotech, ooh, Eurotech brand. And uh, in case you didn't know, gesso is commonly used for priming your canvas so you don't get the canvassy texture underneath your paintings or whatever you're putting on your canvas, I guess. Um, I honestly don't use a lot of gesso, so this is gonna be something that like I learn how to use as I go, but I'm very excited to use it. Next up, we have something that every artist needs in mass quantity, of course. Black and white paint. Now, Kelly, why did you only get black and white paint well, because I've run out of black and white paint before any other paint colors. I already have all the paint colors I need, except for black and white. In case you guys are wondering, these are the larger size. They are nearly eight and a half fluid ounces, as opposed to the smaller ones, which I believe are five ounces. Next up, uh, a little something that I think every artist should have. Maybe not every artist, but maybe like artists like me that like to draw a lot of people. I got a little mannequin. They're super cute. And uh, at Blix, they had boy mannequins and girl mannequins. So like you could have your pick. I just got the mannequin as opposed to the ladykin, I guess. And uh, I think I'm gonna open him. Uh, at Blix, they had mannequins in lots of large and like, like obviously they had bigger ones. Um, but I thought this was really good for like keeping on your desk. Look at that, it's kind of a flexible guy. Bam. 
sassy. Done. Now, I really love to paint, so I could not pass up the opportunity to get myself some new paintbrushes. This is my favorite so far. It is the Princeton Select Lunar Moth, uh, and it's half an inch. And it is honestly like such a nice brush, and it's really good for uh, filling in backgrounds. But I also love that it's like this blue. Oh, I match. Excellent. This wasn't planned. Um, next up, also by Princeton Select, I got an ang angular shader, and that's in a quarter inch. Also very nice. Uh, let's see. The Blick Studio Natural Squirrel. I think that means it's squirrel fur. I don't know how you catch a squirrel. Uh -huh. And it is a flash wa flat, flat wash. And it is three quarters of an inch. Also good as a background brush. Or I guess if you're working with something large. Next up is another Blick Studio. And this is a synthetic and this is a half inch stroke. Really good brush. I really like the um, ombre colors in the bristles, although that's not really important to a brush, but it looks nice. And then I have another Blick Studio Synthetic and it is a round 10. I didn't even take the plastic off yet, but I love round brushes. They're, I find myself using it more than like any other sort of brush. I don't know why, it's, I feel like it just has really good flow. As I just said, I really like painting, so I did splurge and get myself a watercolor palette. Um, these are Angora watercolors and they're made in Germany. Um, but as you can see, it came in like a lot of really nice colors and I do prefer um, tube watercolor when it comes to like brightness and saturation but sometimes you just you want to lay down some base colors and then go back over it with darker more vibrant colors or sometimes you want something more uh or i guess less opaque and i feel like that's what uh works really well when you use a palette next up i got myself some new pencils and i got the hb 2b 6b and 4b and they all came in a, uh, they came in as a set in a box and these are by Derwent and they're the graphic pencils. And they're really, really nice and I like them a lot so far, but I totally wanted to get a set with H pencils too. So a little bummed out, definitely gonna have to go and get some of those because those are kind of the ones I wanted more than the B's uh, in case you didn't know. The, uh, oof. Where is it? The HB pencil is like a regular writing pencil that you use in everyday life. And then as you get bigger numbers like the 6B, it becomes a softer, softer kind of uh, graphite and it makes a darker impression on the paper with like the same amount of pressure. And it's really nice if I'm doing like shading or drawing a picture that involves a lot of uh, pencil work. Going back to paper for just a minute, I'm super excited about this and like I can't wait to do some more work with it. But I got myself a pad of Yupo paper. If you haven't worked with Yupo paper before, it's amazing for watercolors because the watercolor will kind of sit on top of it and it won't I guess absorb into the paper as fast and it leaves this beautiful wash paper. It looks like you're painting on plastic, but it does dry, which is good because if you paint it on plastic, it would take ages to dry and it would be no good. Um, I did do a little sample piece so you could kind of see. I actually used my new watercolor palette on this and it kind of, when the paint dries on top of it, it has kind of a grainy texture, but it's also like really pretty. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it blends really nicely. I hope you can see. Um, but yeah, I really like it a lot. This was um, 
is 10 pages and it's 9 by 12 just like my other pad and definitely if you like watercolor painting you should try this paper out it's a little bit pricier but it's really cool okay so i don't think this next product is available at blix but i got it around the same time and i'm really excited about it and i want to like show you guys because it's really cool so i bought myself some hoo hoo i think that's how you say it hoo hoo markers <laughs> and uh basically they're meant to be like copic markers they're alcohol markers and just like look at all of those colors i think this is a set of um i think it's oh mm, i think it's a set of 40 maybe something like that something around 40 i got it for 20 dollars on amazon 20 dollars a copic marker is like 7.99 and I've done some swatch testing on these and I haven't used them on good paper yet, but the swatches are great and the blending is amazing. And I would definitely, if you have the money, I would, I would buy the bigger set. They have a bigger set and a smaller set and I would buy the bigger set. Um, I haven't seen a lot of reviews on these because I think they're pretty new, but if you see them and like you, if you like alcohol markers, I would definitely give them a shot because I like them a lot. All right, so next up we have something that I always buy lots and lots of because I love having it around. And it is the Higgins Black Magic Ink. And I got mine in waterproof. And basically ink works just like watercolor. If you haven't tried it before, I definitely would recommend it. I was a little weary about it when I first tried it, but uh, after using it for a little bit, it's so nice. And uh, if you use um, black magic or an Indian kind of ink. It's really, it's so pretty on paper, the way it just sits and like dries. So I would definitely try it out and it's not that expensive. So it's not like you're going to break the bank trying something new. I also have some masking tape, which you can't really, you can't go wrong buying masking tape. Although I would say that maybe Blix masking tape might be a little more expensive than the masking tape you get at Home Depot or Michael's maybe, but I really don't know. But I was at the store and I was like, you know, I could use some new masking tape. It's great for clean corners. It's great for making layers. It's, uh, it's great for taping down newspaper if you're spray painting, which is always a good time. 10 out of 10 wood spray paint. Uh, you can't expect me to go into a store and not buy something that I definitely don't need. So I was in the clearance section, as one does, and I got candy cane scented stickers, smickers, smelly stickers. Um, and they're supposed to smell like candy canes, so I'm going to open it for you and I'm going to let you know if these smicker brand stickers smell like candy cane Ooh. smells candy oh it's on a little string it smells candy cane-esque yes it's kind of it's got kind of like a it smells like candy cane alcohol that's really strange and like these are definitely not the most expensive stickers or like stickers that are meant to be high quality. These were like $2. It's not going to be like super high quality, but you know, it's got little reindeer, gingerbread, Santa stocking, you know, Christmassy things that smell like peppermint, which is my absolute favorite. So I'm probably going to just sit here and sniff these for a long time too long last but not least i'm going to show you guys the most expensive thing i bought and also the biggest i got myself a new portfolio yay uh portfolios are great they keep your things safe and from getting like banged up in transport the i 
I don't know how big this one is. I'm gonna say 24 by 36 ish and it's really nice. It's got a Velcro pocket on the front. It's got plastic handles on top for carrying and it also has a carrying strap that's inside of it right now. Uh, but the quality of it is really great. Like it's you can, you can touch it and you can tell that it's really high quality and it looks very nice and professional. And um, it's, it's very sturdy too, which is good if you're taking canvas or more delicate materials somewhere else. So I don't feel like anything I put in it will break, which is always good. Uh, it is on the pricier side, the, my previous um, portfolio was a little bit on the cheaper side, but I can definitely tell that this is a higher quality material. Uh, it is a Robert Ware brand one. And it says, oh, it has the dimensions on it. I just can't read. Um, it is 23 by 31 by three. I was close guys, come on. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you liked my video, please subscribe. I'll be trying to post more things, more about my art, maybe some more uh, vlog type videos. Just let me know what you wanna see. I'll probably do some uh, time-lapse drawings, which would be really fun. And I hope you guys enjoy. See you later.